Hey everyone, my name is Demas Rosley and in this video we're going to be checking out the brand new Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. So welcome back to my YouTube channel. I want to wish everyone a happy new year. I know it's already February but this is the first video I've put up this year. If you're new here, my name is Demis Rusley and I'm a photographer and designer based in Sydney, Australia. In this video, we're checking out the brand new Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra and I'm going to be giving you my first impressions and I'm going to also show you some sample photos and videos that I've taken around Melbourne during the last week. Before we get started, I just want to say a massive thank you to Samsung Australia for letting me have a play with this review unit for a week before the launch of the phone. It was so much fun to test out this beast of a phone and I'm really looking forward to actually using this phone as my daily driver. The first thing I noticed when I held this phone was how the edges felt less rounded and a little bit more flat compared to the S22 Ultra. This meant that it was nicer to hold in the hand as it felt like I could grip it more without feeling like the phone was going to slip out of my hand. Other than that, the only other noticeable change in the hardware was the physical sizes of the cameras. They're a bit larger than last year's S22 Ultra, but more on the camera in just a bit. The Galaxy S23 Ultra is the same thickness compared to the S22 Ultra at 8.9mm, but it's 0.1mm taller at 163.4mm and 0.2mm wider at 78.1mm. It's also now 6 grams heavier at 234 grams. The Galaxy S23 Ultra has the same size display as its predecessor at 6.8 inches. It's a dynamic AMOLED 2X display that has an adaptive refresh rate from 1 to 120 hertz at Quad HD Plus resolution. Out of the box, it's set at Full HD Plus though, so the first thing I did when I turned on the phone was go to the display settings and change it to Quad HD Plus to get the sharpest visuals. This uses more battery though, so it's up to you what you prefer. From what I can see, the S23 Ultra display looks slightly brighter compared to the S22 Ultra one at full brightness. In terms of the battery, the S23 Ultra has a 5000mAh battery which is again the same as the S22 Ultra. However, it now has a new SM8550 Pro octa-core chipset which should improve the battery life of the phone even though the battery size is the same. From my testing over the last week, I've had no issues with the battery life at all as it's always lasted me the full day even after I've taken so many photos and 4K videos. The battery supports 45 watts super fast wired charging which is sold separately and 15 watts fast wireless charging as well. The Galaxy S23 Ultra will have 12 gigs of RAM for the 1TB and 512 GB storage variants and 8 gigs of RAM for the 256GB version. The prices will range from $1,949 to $2,649 in Australia. There's usually some great pre-order offers on the Samsung Australia website, so look out for that if you're considering getting this phone. The S23 Ultra will come in four colors. Phantom Black, which is the phone I have in my hand right now, and there are three new colors which are green, cream, and lavender. It also comes with an inbuilt S Pen to help with note taking and drawing, just like the S22 Ultra. All right, so now let's talk about what I'm guessing you're all here for, the new camera system. The Galaxy S23 Ultra is rocking a quadruple rear camera setup with a 200 megapixel f1.7 wide camera, a 12 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide camera, a 10 megapixel f2.4 3x telephoto camera, and a 10 megapixel f4.9 10x telephoto camera, which can go up to 100 times digital zoom. The biggest upgrade in terms of camera is the main camera, which uses a new sensor capable of producing 200 megapixels, 50 megapixels, and 12.5 megapixel images via pixel binning. It's also now f1.7 compared to f1.8, which means it should be better in low light and for night photography. And it should also produce a better depth of field and subject separation in your images. The Galaxy S23 Ultra also features a 12 megapixel dual pixel f2.2 selfie camera on the front. So I was in Melbourne over the last week watching the Australian Open as I'm a massive tennis fan and I captured a lot of test photos and videos using the phone's camera. All the photos and videos you're about to see have been unedited and come straight out of the phone. So yeah, let's go take a look.
When shooting in 50 megapixel and 200 megapixel modes, the images look great when you zoom in on them, but it does take slightly longer to process and the file sizes are bigger, so I recommend only using these modes if you specifically want a super high res image. It's really good for creating different compositions though from the one image. camera looks like and the audio is coming right out of the camera at 4k 30 and this is what the footage looks like at 0.6 times using the rear camera um, at 4k 30 and the audio is coming right out of the phone as well Finally, going through the settings in the camera app, I noticed a few new things. The first one is that in advanced picture options, you can now select different file options for shooting in pro and expert raw modes. You can now do JPEG only, raw only, and JPEG and raw. 
Also in advanced video options, there's now a 360 audio recording feature as well. Next, Expert Raw is now built into the camera app. It's basically the same thing as Pro Mode, but with a few more features like being able to shoot in the 50 megapixel mode and also this astrophotography feature where you can activate a sky guide to show a digital representation of the star constellations in the sky and pick between 4, 7 and 10 minute exposures when shooting astrophotography. I didn't get a chance to use this mode properly just yet, but I definitely will be trying it out very soon. Stay tuned for that video. In Pro Mode and Expert Raw Mode, you can shoot using all four cameras at 12 megapixels, but you can only shoot using the wide camera when you switch on the 50 megapixel mode. Finally, in Pro Video Mode, I noticed that you can now shoot in 8K 30fps, which wasn't available in previous devices. Overall, although the Galaxy S23 Ultra may look very similar to the Galaxy S22 Ultra to the naked eye, the upgrades to the chipset and the camera quality makes it a much better phone in my opinion. As you can see from the test photos and videos I took, the quality looks really good and it's definitely improved compared to Samsung's previous flagship phones, especially in low light. I'm super keen on switching to the Galaxy S23 Ultra and using it as my daily driver. If you have any questions about the phone or the phone's camera system, let me know in the comments below. Other than that, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing and stay tuned for lots more videos coming soon. As always, thanks so much for watching and remember to always push your creativity to the next level. Bye!